Hello, in this video we'll talk about a few concentration units that you need for analytical and instrumental work, but are not commonly taught in general chemistry, and aren't used super commonly in chemistry in some contexts, but maybe we use them a lot in other contexts. So let's talk about them. Okay, all three of these are basically mass fractions. You're most familiar with weight percent, so I'll start there. The weight percent is the mass of solute, mass of what you care about, divided by total mass of the solution. Then, just like everything else that's a percent, you take the division here, this number is less than 1, and then you multiply by 100 to get a percentage. So, you're familiar with this, either in a chemistry context or outside of it. Let me run through a couple other ways to phrase this, because I'm going to use them for PPM and PPB. So, a percent is 1 gram in 100 one per cent, right? And so you can write a percent this way, and if you have 100 grams total of solution, and you were to measure, say, one gram of solute in that solution, you have 1%, right? If you have five grams of solute in your 100 gram sample, you have 5%. Another way to do this is, if you have a gram of solution, well, 1% out of one gram is 10, one times 10 to the negative two grams, right? 0.01 grams, in a one gram sample is a percent. Okay, so let's talk about PPM. So PPM is parts per million, and it's the mass of solute divided by total mass of solution, just like weight percent. But now instead of multiplying by 100, we multiply by a million. This definition, for some odd reason, for me, has never made a ton of sense. I usually stick with this definition here, and this is the one I remember in my head, where if you have a million grams of solution, then however many grams of solute you have is your number of ppm, right? How many parts per million? So that's the way that works for me. Another way you can frame it is if you have a gram of solution total, um, every microgram that you have is a ppm. Parts per billion is the same kind of thing. You have mass of solute over total mass, except here we're multiplying by a billion. So if you have a billion gram sample, Every gram of it you have is a part per billion. Or if you have a one gram sample, every nanogram you have is a part per billion. Sometimes you'll also see PPT, and usually that means part per trillion, so 10 to the 12th. But sometimes that might mean part per thousand, so I don't like using that number. If you see it, you should double check what they actually mean. Okay, we need to know how to convert in and out of these various mass fractions, either per, um, percent, ppm, or ppb. So we commonly use molarity in chemistry. So we have molarity over here. It's defined as moles over liters, molarity. And this is liters of the total volume of solution. And right, we have moles on top here. We have mass on top here. So to convert the numerator of molarity to mass fraction of ppm or ppb, it's just a grams to moles or moles to grams conversion. You've done this before many times, and you can do it separately. You can take this whole mess of a fraction, just work on the numerator, convert moles into grams, or convert grams into moles, depending on which way you're going, using the molar mass, and it works out just fine. That said, that works if you have molarity. If you have millimolar or something, you need to account for the milli first before you can do the grams to moles conversion. Okay, for the denominator, right over here is liters. Over here is the mass of solution. And so we need to convert volume, starting in liters, to a mass. And so the way to do that is with the density. So if you know the density of the solution, great. You can take the volume of the solution, you can multiply it by the density, and then it gives you the mass. Now, you might not know what the density is, and so very often people assume that the density is one gram per mil. This assumption, I mean, it depends on temperature, it depends on the solution a little bit. It's only really good out to maybe two, maybe three sig figs. So if you have a really precise number, you need to measure the density. But people tend to willy-nilly assume one gram per mil is the density, and the key here is we don't tell you that you need to assume it. So keep that in mind. You might just have to do this on your own. When is this reasonable? When you have kind of a lower concentration of solute and not a bunch of other stuff in solution and your solvent is pure water. 
it's not reasonable if you're in salt water or some other solvent or you have some sort of viscosity modifier or some sort of weird thing in solution that is in addition to your solute. So you have to know what you're working with. But generally, if we don't tell you any of the other things, then if it's a dilute solution, assume it's one gram per mil, no problem. Okay, and since examples make the world go round, let's do a couple examples. So here we have a molarity, although it's nanomolar, of copper two plus ions in an aqueous solution, and we want to convert to PPB, parts per billion. So keep in mind, anytime you have nanomolar or any sort of SI prefix in front of molar, you can say nanomoles over liters, right? The prefix nano didn't change, you just took the capital M, turned it into moles over liters. So we did this. Now before we use the molar mass, we need to get out of nanomoles and get into moles. So here's how I did this. Again, you can flip it the other way. You either have plus nine nanomoles or you have minus nine moles. Just remember to keep it straight. And okay, so then after you do this conversion, then you have moles, you use the molar mass, it gets you a number of grams in a liter. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this number down here. Then I'm gonna work on the denominator. So we're in liters, the unit of density is grams per mils, so I need to convert liters into milliliters, so here's how I did that. Again, you can do it a couple ways. And then here's the assumed density I have, and the number didn't change. This changed, because we converted from milliliters to liters, um, but now we have grams of solute over grams of solution, a single gram of solution. So this number by itself, I mean if you round to the right number of sig figs, this number by itself is your answer in parts per billion, and so you can just go with that because you know that 10 to the negative ninth gram per gram is a part per billion. But my brain works this way, so I go a little farther. I take this number here, I just copied it down, and then I multiply the top and the bottom by 10 to the plus 9. And that happens to turn this into whatever it is. And then in the denominator, I have 10 to the plus 9 grams. So this is literally a part per billion. So I have a billion gram solution. How many grams of solute do I have? Whatever grams of solute I have in a billion gram solution is parts per billion. This really only has two sig figs, always round at the end. Okay, one last example. We're gonna go from an aqueous 175 ppm solution of the pesticide DDT. Just wanted to pick some random molecule. Um, here's the molar mass at DDT. So we have ppm, let's convert to molarity. So. Here's PPM. Now, the definition of PPM, this is the one I use, it's how many parts in a million. So if I have a million grams of solution, I have 175 grams of DDT. You're very infrequently going to actually have a million grams of solution, but the ratio here is good, and that's what matters. So, okay, now we have grams of DDT, we can convert to moles of DDT, so I did that. This 10 to the 6th is actually a live number that's still here, because remember, this is moles in a million grams of solution, but we're going to need to divide by a million because we don't actually have a million grams. So keep that in mind. You actually have to use this. But I'm going to play with the units first. I've got grams here. I'm going to use the assume a density of 1 because this is a pretty dilute solution, and I don't mention there's anything else in it. So I'm going to use the assumed density of 1. Notice the problem didn't tell me to do that. I just had to do it and then convert milliliters into liters because molarity is moles per liters. And then I take this number, I divide by a million, and then I divide by 10 to the negative three or 0 0.001, and then I get this number. And here's the number, 10 to the negative fourth. This is moles per liters. Great, so I have a molarity. Now I copy that number down here. I converted the moles to liters to a capital M because that's how we often see it. Great. If this was an exam, you'd have the right answer here, because I didn't tell you what units to give the answer in. In the real world, you have to decide that, and people like to talk about numbers between 1 and 1,000, or maybe 0.1 and 1,000, and so if we divide this eh, by 10 to the negative 6, then that'll give us micromolar, and then that is kind of a palatable number to say, 494 micromolar. You could say, 0.494 millimolar if you want. Um, I wouldn't put this into nanomolar because that's kind of an obnoxious number to say, 494,000 nanomolar. Like, that's not the point of SI units. So 
Again, it's good practice to try to convert this to some sort of reasonable units. Um, if it's an exam question, see what we want you to put it in. And do remember always that, well, this number only has three sig figs, so my answer only needs three sig figs. Cool. Thanks for watching.